This is the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're back with the finale of Agatha All Along, the final two episodes. Episode 8, Follow Me, My Friend, to Glory at the End, and Episode 9, Maiden Mother Crone. You must know the way, then. How dare you? Who are you? Forgive me. I heard your singing. I thought you may know the way. The way to what? The Witch's Road. I heard tell of it. The road offers a prize worth the peril to witches who are brave and true. You know the ballad, and I'm in great need. Might you show me the way? You inquire in good faith, so I shall respond in kind. Of course I will show you the way to the road. I know it by heart. First, we must gather a coven. Welcome back, fellow Defenders to TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about Agatha all along the last two episodes of hmm, the second season of WandaVision. Um, We're talking about episode eight, Follow Me, My Friend, to Glory at the End, and episode nine, Maiden Mother Crone. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow Defenders. I am your other host, John. Yeah, no Chris again this week, unfortunately. No, no. He's got the big move. He does. The he big does. move. Yeah, moving house at the moment. So um, we thought we'd be able to fit in a podcast with him. Uh, but we were going to do it on Halloween night. And then our neighbor decided to have an entire fireworks display outside <laughs> our house um, <laughs> last night. So uh, we couldn't record, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> the remnants this morning of all the fireworks. <laughs> was ridiculous. Absolutely. Yes. And of course, our cat wasn't particularly pleased with that. Now, neither were our neighbor's dogs. So, um, yes. You think they would have got the message when the dogs were barking <laughs> for two hours. But anyway, uh, we're not here to complain about our neighbors. We're here to talk about the excellent last two episodes of Agatha all along. But there has also been some Marvel news that came out this week that we want to talk about because there's lots and lots of stuff coming up on Disney Loads. Plus uh, next year. Our over the next couple of weeks, actually, uh, to begin with, because uh, Deadpool and Wolverine um, is going to be coming out in November on Disney+. Plus. And then our next Marvel series is coming up in December. What if season three is coming up on December 22nd, just before the holidays, John? Yeah, I, I know. I, for some reason, completely forgot about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I love the What If uh, series. Mm-hmm. I've really, really enjoyed it. And actually, in the announcement, I'm kind of really pleased that there's a whole rake of uh, Marvel animations yeah. coming because they look really cool, like uh, Marvel Zombies, yes, which is for Halloween uh, 2025. Yeah, um, and so sp- I spinning out of What If as well. That was ex- uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, the Eyes of Wakanda, which is slightly earlier the in August uh, mm-hmm. 2025. It looks very pretty. Yeah, um, really does, like it? the the look of that. Yeah, um, it look it kind of yeah. looks like the um, the Star Wars ones that they do. We we covered one of the Star Wars um, short shows that they do uh, in between. Yes, big animated exactly. series. It looks similar to that kind of style. It's a four-episode uh, animated series as well. There's one more animated show that's going to be coming up uh, early next year, which is Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, which we're not going to be covering on TV Podcast Industries, but I know Chris is a big fan and will definitely be uh, be showing it to his lovely son who's becoming a Spider-Man fan, even at one year old. So uh, I know he'll be <laughs> he'll be watching that along with him. Uh, but the big ones for next year as well are three live-action TV shows coming next year. We knew about one, which was Daredevil Born Again coming March 4th. 2025, but there's two more that are coming out next year confirmed. Now, we knew they were filming, but um, the next one is Ironheart, which comes uh, out of Wakanda forever. We met the character of Riri Williams in uh, in that movie. So uh, finally, that's being released. And that was that was been in production for about three years. I suppose you're doing Iron Man on TV on a TV budget. So, um, 
you know, there's going to be a lot of, of uh, CGI and special effects work on that. I guess say. so. But I mean, yeah. it depends how they want to treat it. If, mm-hmm. yeah, they're just flying around in an Iron Man suit every five seconds. Well, then, yeah, it's going to be costly. <laughs> it's going to take about 10 As long as they make. use it yeah. well, it exactly. doesn't need to be overly expensive given... Yeah. The amount of CGI that's happening, I think, in TV now, anyway. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, given... there's some some shows have got whole scenes mm-hmm. uh, CGI'd, and yeah. I'm not just talking about the Rings of Power, but you know, the Wheel of Time, mm-hmm. certainly the big uh, fantasy stuff. Yeah, um, absolutely. really does. Yeah, yeah, but I think given the little clip that we saw of uh, Ironheart in the uh, in the teaser trailer, uh, it does look like they're they're going all all out. So yeah. looking forward to that, and the next one. Um, which will be very interesting, is Wonder Man uh, coming in December 2025. Uh, this one kind of came out of nowhere for John, I think. Uh, Chris had actually mentioned on the podcast a few weeks ago. Yeah, but I, think I just heard didn't about have it. any notion of this. I don't know how I missed it. Yeah. I just find it bizarre that I've missed this. <laughs> I don't um, know but nonetheless, other than Daredevil Born Again, uh-huh. um, I don't know, Ironheart, I think I'm going to have to be won over okay. uh, by that. Um, I've kind of got vibes of i'm not too sure how much i care okay um about it well, i really like so, you and we're kind of forever so, no me too yeah. me too um and to be honest the 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 guy in in the scene um sort of little short clip uh mm-hmm. in that montage um has been in the recent um twister 2 uh, movie twisters, yep, twisters. In fact, yeah, <laughs> I just keep thinking of uh, the ice cream twister. Oh, right. um, so I'm like, mm, yum. Uh, <laughs> but also, uh, I think he was in a Transformers, and I think he's right. quite good. And I liked her in Wakanda Forever because mm-hmm. I loved that movie. And um, but I just don't know. I'm just not necessarily kind of vibing it for yep. want of a better word. Um, you okay. know, uh, and I, it was a maybe a, just a bit like with Hawkeye. Mm. Um, you know. Um, and you really enjoyed that when it came out, so yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I've not closed. I've not closed my eye and heart <laughs> to right. it. Yeah, but um, it's the one that is probably going to have to work the hardest for me to sort of get excited about. Because weirdly, and this is why I'm saying this, is because with Wonder Man, I just kind of just didn't realize this was going to be a thing. Mm-hmm. I think. Actually, from the clip, you've got Yeha Abdul Mateen II, mm-hmm. who was in Watchmen, yes, who was. I really liked. I really like this um, actor. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, great. And then you got Ben Kingsley reprising Trevor Slass- uh, Slattery. Uh-huh. And I was just like, okay, I'm all in on this, even though for some reason it completely didn't appear on my radar. Um and yeah, I'm kind of really intrigued. Maybe it's the, also the intrigue of Wonder Man. You know, it's very peripheral character in the Marvel comics. Yeah, he, um, he's basically a superhero who plays the role of a superhero on TV or in movies. That's, yeah. basically, that's basically it. So I don't so, know what, what tack they're taking here, but effectively Simon Williams is the character. He's going in for audition, on audition and he looks like he's working with Trevor Slattery who's trying to make his way back into the entertainment industry after being uh, kidnapped by the Mandarin. Um, yeah, the so I'm like, I'm, I'm just kind of really intrigued by this. Yeah, and I, I like certainly uh, sort of the, the main cast mm-hmm. here that I've seen so far. I mean, who doesn't like Trevor Slattery? Absolutely. He's been great and we haven't seen him since shock g yeah uh, exactly so i'll be looking forward to seeing him but you've got a whole year to get up to speed in that one yep. we'll get ourselves back up to speed on what if before it comes out in december uh, as to where that's going uh, but we do know mentioning shang chi we know that uh, that there's going to be uh, a, an episode at least that features shang chi in there which is which is great to see him because i'm really looking forward to that second movie and it's been such a long time yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> but i think that's it for the upcoming slate of marvel on disney plus and um, there's lots of movies coming out next year as well which would be really exciting because this year has been quite light uh, for Marvel so, it has yeah. and that's why I'm also surprised at this slate mm-hmm. to be honest because I, I thought they were going to be pacing yeah. uh, themselves and all of a sudden it's kind of like oh we need to pace faster I, um, I do think there's a point where you've already put down the money for the project so you have to kind of release it or else you're it's it's a, 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 a an accountancy thing where you've already spent it so you might as well release it to the public you know yeah, so no, I agree. so there is going to come a point and especially with everything being connected in the marvel universe you kind of have to put this stuff out or else it starts to make less and less sense well yeah um, so for sure 
Um, but I think it looks really, really mm-hmm. interesting for 2025. It does. So, fellow defenders, there will be plenty of Marvel goodies uh, for you to uh, pop on over to the Defenders podcast on TV Podcast Industries mm-hmm. uh, to listen to our dulcet tones. Um, and so, as always, if you want to listen to all of that, as well as the stuff we're doing at the moment, please head on over to tvpodcastindustries.com, uh-huh. uh, where you can subscribe on any Wiccan or Android-loving podcast player of your choice. Yeah. There'll be tons and tons of opportunities as well for theories, observations, comments, you name it. Mm-hmm. And so we would love to get those uh, from you by uh, email at feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com mm-hmm. or through our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash TV Podcast Industries. Absolutely. And a huge thank you to everybody who's been sending in your feedback for Agatha all along. We'll be talking about your feedback later on in the podcast, but there will be one last opportunity. If there's anything you want to talk about from Agatha all along, we will be doing a wrap-up episode where we'll be wrapping up our pub quiz, our Agatha Cauldron quiz, uh, yet yeah, later on. Um, once the making of uh, episode comes out on Disney+, Plus, which is hopefully going to come out in the next couple of weeks, we will be back talking about Agatha all along. So if you want to get any final thoughts into us on the show or the podcast, uh, email us to those that email address indeed let us get on with our spoiler filled discussion of episode 8 and 9 of Mm -hmm. Agatha all along follow me my friend to glory at the end and of course maiden mother crone Mm -hmm. Derek what are some of the episode details, please? Well, the showrunner, of course, for the show is Jack Schaefer, who is the showrunner for WandaVision. Uh, both episodes here were directed by Gonzo Montiero. Um, she directed episode six of Agatha all along, and as we mentioned then, she directed two episodes of The Witcher season three and two episodes of the first season of Wednesday as well. So uh, a really experienced director in this type of show as well, So, which is really good. For sure. Absolutely love the fact um, that she's done uh, some Witcher episodes. Mm-hmm. We really, really like that, and Wednesday as well. So, I mean, this is... Is, this is spookily in her wheelhouse, uh, very I much would so. say. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Episode 8 was written by Peter Cameron. Uh, he wrote episode 5 and 6 of Moon Knight and episode 5 and 6 of WandaVision as well. He also wrote the teleplay for the excellent uh, horror Halloween extravaganza that was uh, Werewolf by Night. And he's a writer on the upcoming Fantastic Four movie as well. That is so interesting. Peter, you have a lot to do. Because... Yes, um, I love Moon Knight. I think that was the first Marvel property uh, that I gave five out of five, literally, I think, for every mm. uh, episode or there or, there or thereabouts. Maybe what? one um, I didn't do. Uh, one Division, again, equally solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, Werewolf by Night, really enjoyed that as a one-off. It was great, uh, yeah. So good. Um, and if that's the quality that Peter Cameron is involved in, then good, because for me... That will be required to dig Fantastic Four out of uh, a Fantastic Four shtick, um, to be honest. Uh, I hope, absolutely, yeah. And hopefully it'll get a Fantastic Five from you, <laughs> out of five, uh, when we see that next year. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, like, I mean, that's really good to see that yeah. someone like Peter Cameron is a, you know, a supporting writer there in the movie, to yeah. be honest. Yep. And the finale of the season was written by Jack Schaefer, the showrunner, uh, with Laura Dunney. Uh, Laura Dunney wrote episode two of this season and wrote the penultimate episode of One Division as well. So, um, so again, I love this about this show. And um, we will talk about it as we get into our spoiler filled discussion. But, um, this does feel now, especially at the end of the season, like One Division season two, and will be coming out uh, in the future with a third season, which is Vision Quest, uh, on, based on the adventures of the Vision that we saw leading yeah. One Division at the end of, at the end of season one. Uh, it wouldn't have made sense to call this One Division season two, uh, of course. It just wouldn't make it wouldn't make logical sense. The story of season one was about Wanda. This season about Agatha. The next season's about Vision. So, uh, so I guess that's the way they're going to work it. Yeah. Um, now, interestingly, we heard that Terry Metalis is going to be the uh, the showrunner for um, Vision Quest, as it's currently being called. Uh, Terry Metalis, we talked about this year because he was the showrunner for uh, Picard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the final season. Yeah, that's really interesting, there, so. actually. Yeah, kind of and cool. I, I like the fact that it will have some linkages here to Agatha all along. I think so. I think so. He's going to be on a quest, and so is his son. Billy. Yeah, well, it, I think it makes sense, too, because equally, like, we just haven't seen Vision since WandaVision. Yeah. 
So we kind of need to have those eyes on vision, yeah. really. We need we need to find out who he is because uh, by the end of well, that, that season, we didn't really know who that <laughs> yes. character was. Yeah, yeah that yeah. as well. But with all of that said, and uh, oh, I'd have to give a bit of praise to Jack Schaefer as well. Really interested to see what she does next. And she worked on WandaVision, worked on Agatha all along. I'm certain that she has big things in her Marvel future at the very least. But uh, we'll be really interested to see what she's done because she's done such a good job show running those two shows. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think Agatha all along has been really um, standout mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Uh, but look, um, we'll get into the, the episodes because, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily be full of praise for uh, this final mm. um Swan song with Agatha. Interesting, you know? interesting. Well, we'll definitely get into but that. I but I enjoyed them. Yeah, but John, do you want to give us your synopsis for the final two episodes of Agatha All Along? Sure. Following Lilia's death, Agatha is confronted by Rio, the personification of death. She believes Billy is an abomination as he gained a second life by entering the body of William Kaplan. Agatha agrees to deliver him willingly to death once they've completed the road and is allowed to continue on the journey with Jen and Billy. But after a few steps, they find that the witch's road goes in a circle. Angered that the road is not what he thought, Billy puts his shoes back on and the three are transported to body bags in a version of Agatha's basement with grow lights that slowly go out. The final trial has begun. Each of the remaining members of the coven need to get their reward for reaching the end of the road. When Jen learns that Agatha was the witch who bound her, she performs the unbinding spell and regains her abilities. Jen disappears, having gotten what she needed from the road. Agatha helps Billy locate Tommy's soul, and Billy puts it in the body of a drowning boy. Billy disappears, and Agatha grows a flower through a crack in the floor using a seed from her locket, completing the trial in the nick of time. She leaves the room and finds herself in her garden, where death awaits her. While Billy returns to help Agatha, she attempts to complete her vow to Rio and give Billy up, but he convinces her it's her time. Agatha kisses her old lover and dies, returning to the earth. Death allows Billy to leave and he returns home to his parents. Upon entering his bedroom, he realises that many of the objects match aspects of the road and hears Agatha laughing. Elsewhere, in 1750, Agatha has difficulty in childbirth. As Death arrives to take her son, Agatha pleads with her not to take him. Death tells Agatha that she already has a better deal than anyone else alive, so all she can give her son is time. Agatha gives birth to Nicholas Scratch, knowing that one day Death will eventually return to take him. Agatha spends the next six years absorbing other witches' powers and leaving their bodies for Death while raising Nicholas. As they travel together, Nicholas and his mother concoct a familiar song of their journey. Over many iterations of their travelling tune, the ballad of the Witch's Road is formed. Nicholas performs the song in a small village, hoping to ensnare some witches for his mother, but he is too sick to complete the ruse. That night, death finally comes to take the young boy. While Agatha mourns her son at his graveside, a witch from the village approaches her. She wants Agatha to help guide her down the famous witch's road. Agatha hatches a plan to continue her long life using the song she created with her son. She spends the next three centuries absorbing other witches' magic by tricking them into gathering covens to open the road, then aggravating them into attacking her. Back in Billy's room in present day, Agatha, now a ghost, tells Billy that he created the road. He despairs, blaming himself for the deaths of Lilia, Alice, and Sharon. Agatha tries to relieve some of his guilt by saying she killed Alice and Lilia gave herself up, but admits Sharon was killed by Billy's mind. As Agatha planned to kill the whole coven anyway, she believes he should consider himself a saviour as Jen got out alive. Billy returns to Westview and tries to banish Agatha in her basement, but she reveals that she is afraid of dying because she cannot face Nicholas Scratch. After all, she's done. Billy allows Agatha to remain as a ghost and seals the door he created to the Witch's Road with the name of Sharon Davis, Alice Wu Gulliver, and Lilia Calderu. 
Together, the new coven of two, Billy and Agatha, set out on a quest based on Billy's vision to find his brother, Tommy. And so their vision quest begins. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I like it, John. I like it. Indeed. Yes. All I could say as we start out, I hope nobody thought I was spoiling anybody when I came up with the theory uh, about three episodes ago that this was all in Billy's mind and uh, (laughs) he'd put it all together. It was all uh, revealed in the room. I think that's just good writing. They had all of the clues there in the show that it doesn't come out and sideswipe you when Billy has the realization that this all came from his mind, that he created the road. So uh, it did. there's only little things. He he hadn't... um, invented the witches like I thought he had, that he'd invented all of them. Those were still all pulled yeah, in by, by Agatha. Yeah. And I mean, actually, it makes sense. You know, in, in the good old phrase, it's not from the road he licked it. Uh-huh, um, exactly. Because, you know, Billy can manipulate his and others' reality mm-hmm. like his mother did exactly. uh, in Westview. He has the same tell as his mother, I think, yeah. as Agatha says. Exactly. Yeah, yeah this, this this was really good. Yeah. I, 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 did, I did like it. Um, and I kind of liked how... In a sense, that con of the Witch's Road by Billy is replicated in ye olde times, um, mm-hmm. effectively with the con of the Witch's Road being sort of passed into people's imagination. I mean, yeah. it's kind of almost like the non-magic form of something that isn't real, you know, gaining sort of mythical or law some yeah. status of law i mean it, it's in the same way that you know you the patron saint of of england is saint george mm-hmm. who slayed a dragon apparently yeah or <laughs> you have the unicorn on like the the royal crest so i mean yeah. these mythical uh creatures mm-hmm. and and it's kind of a, in a similar way but it's also like the the idea of a story being passed around and suddenly gaining this exactly uh, this reality. I- idea that there's a reality like the what was this um over two thousand people arrived in dublin city center last night because they mistakenly yeah. believed there was a parade happening <laughs> <laughs> so they, they believed because of things that have been said online so very similar <laughs> to the story of the witches and we Road. might yeah. get another parade from it <laughs> we might. because everyone's saying well, look how many have. people exactly. showed up. There's you obviously a market or, you know, there's a demand for it. So I, I think it's hilarious that yeah, a prank has that many people funny. in Ireland. Like, it's a tiny country. Uh, to get that many people out <laughs> is very impressive. But then again, Irish people will go out for any kind of knees up. Uh, so why not? Uh, good stuff. Uh, but let's so good, let's so get good. into our top five spells for these two episodes. We are going to do it kind of chronologically, though. I'll uh, pick up little bits and pieces uh, of uh, bits that happen later on, I suppose, as we talk. But yeah. let's start out with our spell number one. A deal with death, John. Um, I think the opening of this, because we have the reveal last week's episode that Rio is death, and I'm going to just call her death from now on because her name was never Rio. Uh, Rio is uh, is not the character name. She is death. Um, but we have the moment where she collected Alice Wu Gulliver. That's where she disappeared to. Um, once Alice died, we have her talking to death and i must say this had such a sense of the sandman version of death which was always really unusual this um this ear to the dying as they're being escorted yeah. away from their bodies and the kind of sadness that they have to experience when they're talking to people as they're going and you have alice going is this all the time i get and death says to her i've had a nickel for the amount of times i was asked that you know um kind of jokingly but she is very careful with her and very kind with her we hear uh yeah. you know alice kind of going well I've, I've finally overcome this curse that i've had for my entire life now i can finally do great things and she says but you're a protection witch and you died protecting someone you have <laughs> achieved the the big, biggest life goal you could have achieved really you know it's very matter of fact, and I kind of like the deadpanness yeah, that, okay. <laughs> that death does. I yeah. mean, yes, she's right. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's as harsh as no, it's not Rio, harsh. as Rio has been in the last few episodes. It feels like there's still a kind of a welcoming of uh, this of is her Alice job. Exactly. Everything else and the harshness probably is more directed at Agatha. Yes, and that's where you see that the relationship has broken down. Mm-hmm. But yes, you're right. With Alice Wu, she is relatively gentle with her yeah. and and um, just very matter of fact uh plain speaking to her you mm-hmm. know you've died um and you died protecting someone 
and your protection witch. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, she's so she's realized her her greatest uh, possibility. Protection witch, dying, protecting someone. I I liked it, <laughs> but. We do also have a bit of a conversation. So Agatha leaves and goes outside. Jen and uh, and Billy are talking just after the end of the last trial where Lilia died. And we learn a little bit more about death. We learn uh, Jen saying the green witch is about growth and decay of all living things. So when death said or when Rio introduced herself to everybody, she said she is the green witch. That does kind of jibe with this a bit. She is the green witch is all about uh, growth and decay of all living things. So she is the biggest of all green witches because she is death. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. But, I mean, you have here then um, this deal uh, being done with death uh, mm -hmm. between uh, death and Agatha. Yes. Because the whole point here is that Billy is seen by um, death as a violation because mm -hmm. he's stolen a second life um, in William Kaplan. Yeah. And he's going to try and do that again to try and find Tommy, and he can't be allowed to do it twice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's kind of uh, disrupting, I think she calls it, he's disrupting the sacred balance. Yes. Which I really hope this isn't like the sacred timeline. Um, I hope we're not introducing another concept. <laughs> I As soon as she said sacred balance, yeah. Yeah. I was like... Is this like Loki? It, it kind of reminded me of it, absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and I think that is now a thing in the MCU. There is, um, you know, like um, Doctor Strange saying there's only one option out of the 14 million options yeah. to, to save us from Thanos, you know. Uh, like Loki saying the sacred timeline, and now we have Death saying there is a sacred balance that she needs to maintain. Um, which we understood this is part of the reason why she was chasing down the witches, because they live a longer life than most other people. They should be dead far earlier, but which is like Lilia who've lived for centuries and Jen and Agatha are all people that shouldn't be alive in the world today, but they've had a much longer life than others. That's why death's yes. particularly need for them. At least that's my speculation. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the kind of deal Agatha has because that's still a bit hazy for me. Um, but the deal that she makes with death here is because death can't take Billy, she can't kill him. If she kills him, he'll reincarnate. So she doesn't actually get the life that she that she wants to have. She makes a deal with her that she will convince Billy to give himself up, willing yes. uh, at the end of the road, as long as they're allowed to complete this task, complete this trip on the to the end of the road. Then she will hand over Billy uh, willingly to uh, to death. Yes, but in return, it's that she or Agatha is allowed to go and be free. Yeah. Um, and not have to deal with death, her former mm. lover. Yeah. And when the time comes where she does that, she doesn't want to see her face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. And I thought there was, there is that moment of um, sadness almost that comes across death when she hears this from Agatha. It's not only that their relationship is broken down and that Agatha hates her, it is that she never wants to see her again ever yeah and i think there's always been this bit between the conversations or in in between the words that are being said that you feel like rio death wants to get back with agatha um yeah yeah i i, I think so i i think that's but in this moment it's again to what extent does anyone trust agatha you yeah. know because we've had this all along we have <laughs> um you know uh we're Agatha's reputation precedes her. Mm. She is the covenless witch. She is the witch that kills other witches. Yeah. Um, and here she is effectively making a deal with death to betray Billy. And um, I don't, you know, and I think this is interesting and I it will, certainly will come to a bit later, but, and I, in this moment, believe that Billy wouldn't trust Agatha. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, because yeah. of everything that's happened along the road mm. previously. Yeah. Um, the warnings from Jen, the warnings from Lilia, mm -hmm. you know, seeing his reaction to Agatha as well over various things that have happened along the road, yeah. like, um, you know, the death of Alice Wu. Yeah. Um, so this is the, the intrigue here for me is, is Agatha so untrustworthy that she will effectively um sell out billy mm. and the likelihood is is that it's a yes well exactly exactly although there's just two last little points i want to make about this section here um 
One is that death says to Agatha, why do you let them believe these things about you? So it's like her saying to her, you know, everybody seems to think you're this bad person who killed your son or sacrificed your son for a longer life. Why do you let them believe all of these bad things about you? So death is, has always seen the good side of Agatha almost. So the fact that she is untrustworthy or the fact that she's maintained this reputation of being untrustworthy, death seems to be saying to her, no, that's not that's not the real you. I know the real you. Um, and then one other tiny thing uh, in here is just that when death makes her exit, it's the reveal that the road doesn't really exist because she walks up to the side of the road and just cuts her way out like yeah. it's a stage. Yes, <laughs> and so, exactly. And I like that. It's a, it's just a little subtle touch that the road isn't what you thought it was for the season so yeah. far. And by the end of the episode, you know that it's not, that it doesn't exist. Agreed, really. but yeah. I just like that little touch as she says goodbye and cuts her way out. Yeah, definitely. Exit stage left, pursued by Bear. And on to spell number two. Exactly. Uh, the end of the road, the yeah. final trial. Yeah, I thought this was quite interesting because um, we have them all grouping back up together, going on the journey again, and then suddenly they're back at the start. They're back at their shoes at the beginning of the road. And technically, there isn't a final trial as such. Um, we we had seen it in all the previous episodes, them going into a trial to get past it, to get to the end of the road. What's happening here is they get to the end of the road and then go into the trial to earn their gifts, to earn the thing that they need to, to leave the road almost. So it's slightly different. This seems to be Agatha's trial, as she says at the end, this is my trial to pass, but everybody does their piece and exits the road at this point. Um, were you kind of shocked by this moment when they arrive back at their shoes at the beginning of the road, John? Um, what did you think of it? Though? No, I, I, I like this. I uh -huh. mean, I think, I think that circularity of the road makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um, that the path isn't always in one direction away from the starting point. Mm -hmm. Uh, that you sometimes come back to that beginning but you're coming back to that beginning or that moment having changed because you've been through the trials along the way absolutely and here maybe we the trial was the friends that we made along the way exactly <laughs> and then you have this final trial yeah. which is that you can do something differently and mm -hmm. actually in this moment and agatha calling it out as her trial mm -hmm. it's that agatha Unbeknowing with Jen helps her. With Billy, she helps him mm -hmm. and she helps herself. Yes. You yeah. know? She creates life from death. Exactly. The big, the big um, task. And I, so I really I, I thought this made sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that it, you know, it cleared up Jen's story. So as to why yeah. the doctor, you know, she couldn't figure out how this doctor was able to bind her. Mm -hmm. And people were saying, Well, it's in your head and all that. And then you you suddenly see a sheepish Agatha, because she realizes, oh, you were passing through Boston uh, at that time as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that, you know, she would bind witches for cash, even though she is a witch, so that she could get a bit of green back, yeah. you know, effectively. I think by the end of the ninth episode, we've learned that Agatha really doesn't care for witches as such. She really doesn't care about their lives. She's, a, a, as we said earlier on, and as the teen calls her, she is a covenless witch. I just yeah. called him the teen again for the first time in three episodes. As Billy says, <laughs> she's a covenless witch. She doesn't care about other witches. So the the idea of her taking banknotes for um, for binding witches, it makes sense, again, by the end of the, the ninth episode. You've kind of seen how bad she's been to witches over the, over the centuries. Um, I do love the opening of it, uh, of this trial, when they all roll out in body bags and the teen gets out instantly and Agatha gets out immediately and they're all kind of freaked out by being in the body bags and then Jen, <laughs> Jen comes, get the zip open and Agatha turns around to Billy and goes, don't take away her struggle <laughs> by, by helping her out of the body bag. <laughs> I just thought that was a really funny little moment from Agatha. Yeah, absolutely. And I kind of, I loved the visual of the grow lights almost mm -hmm. being like a huge clock face yeah. and, and the tick down there absolutely. as we have Jen, as I say, uh, doing the unbinding spell in mm -hmm. order to, um, with a, a piece of um, Agatha's long hair, sort yep. of winding it around uh, her wrists. It all, almost reminded me of Harry Potter when you have 
Bellatrix uh, Lestrange mm-hmm. putting the um, unbreakable vow, I think it yes, is, around yes. um, Snape's wrist. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of felt very similar to that. And I kind of like that. I like the fact that, you know, Agatha is almost trying to, you know, goad her, put her off, whatever it is. And Jen is just very, you know, you hold nothing, just mm-hmm. chanting, you hold nothing. Love you know, that, yeah. Um, as she's doing this unbinding ritual, um, and and then there were two, uh, effectively, um, as Jen gets her power back and the road has given her what she was seeking, and she leaves the trial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then it's Billy's turn, uh, and again, as you say, this is um, Agatha creating life from death, um, something that's the opposite of what she's been doing for the last two hundred fifty years. Um, she yeah. has brought Jen back, um, would have killed her at the beginning. She's uh, working with Billy to bring Tommy's essence back. Uh, I love this scene. I thought there was it was a really powerful scene when she's asking him to remember the last time he was with Tommy. And it is that moment that we saw in WandaVision when the two of them are are put to bed for the final time by Wanda and yeah. uh, and Vision, and they're saying goodbye to each other. And we have that guidance from Agatha, you know, listen to his breathing, and even when his breathing stops, concentrate on your breathing, you you won't lose him if you focus on him. I just thought it was really interesting. And then she guides him to put him into another vessel, similar to the way that he's put himself into the vessel of William Kaplan. And there was an interesting little touch from Agatha there as well, when she's trying to guide Billy, and Billy says, I don't know how I did it the last time. How am I going to do it again? And she kind of says, well, that's just how magic works, isn't it? You never know how you did it, but let's work together. And eventually they find a draining boy. Uh, And this, I think, is interesting because this is obviously the thing that's going to be followed up in future, uh, in either a future series, either either the Vision TV show or maybe an Agatha Agatha season two. Um, It's that the boy that he puts Tommy into is being bullied and dies by draining. And you hear Billy really worried about it because he says his life will be hard. He has no one to care for me. He has no family. He has no one to ta- no one around to take care of from. So yeah, but he's also concerned that he's killing this boy mm. so that his own brother uh, Tommy can live, but then disappears mm-hmm. and ha- doesn't have the question answered. And I love the fact um, that. Agatha answers that question yeah. with him absent and says, sometimes boys die. And, Oof. you know, yeah. like it's really kind of um, poignant, really, yeah. in a sense Absolutely. that uh, Billy is finding this this vessel. I mean, it's ultimately what ha- perturbed death uh, was that, you know, Billy can actually give Tommy another light mm-hmm. by using this drowned boy's body yeah and and finding it i love the way that it's kind of you know billy's going it's dark i can't see i can't find this other life Mm -hmm. um you know gradually then you just that darkness makes way to the flashes of the kid being bullied and being drowned Uh, and then obviously that moment where tommy is with that boy's body and it all again then there's one yeah you're down to one um and uh, I, it was really good yeah, yeah I, I really enjoyed these um for sure yeah yeah and then it's agatha's turn yes it's just one thing i don't think we said it earlier on uh one thing that i just thought was interesting agatha does say this room is her basement very early on in the trial um you know all the rest of them had been houses that they'd gone into on the road but agatha very early on says there's no place like home when yeah, she absolutely. looks around the room yeah. even though it looks nothing like her actual basement i guess you can tell by the size of it and I think the door it's the exit. Exit. yeah, yeah the, i the think it's exit. more the access yeah. um and also another reference back to the wizard of oz of course yeah toto <laughs> of course um but it's her turn and, and she has only seconds left and in the locket that she's been holding for these hundred years um with the lock of her son's hair of nikki's hair there's a dandelion seed underneath um his hair and she uses that to grow in the room to again create life from death the locket that has held the hair of her dead son uh, brings new life into the world. So um, again, taking the two episodes together, I think this is really important for Agatha, for the growth of Agatha herself as a character and the yeah. change that we're seeing at this stage after hundreds of years of her being and doing the things she's done. Um, there is a change that comes in Agatha here. Uh, absolutely. And interestingly as well, 
she escapes the road, mm-hmm. but doesn't have her prize, mm-hmm. which is magic. Yeah. And I think with that, on to spell number three, because Absolutely. she needs that magic to defend herself mm-hmm. pretty quickly. Yeah. Because we have the battle with death. Yes, we do. Uh, between Agatha and Brio, or aka death. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's there trying to sort of counter um, death here, and she doesn't have the magic. She doesn't have her power. Uh, and I love the fact that you just have Rio cackling on top of the roof. That's great. Yes. Uh, I love the moment where she floats down from the roof mm-hmm. as well. There's, I think there's so much to enjoy in this battle. What and- a costume for death, though. It looks so, so cool. And I know we saw a little flash of it last week when the character was revealed for the first time of the of the uh, skull yeah. uh, going over Aubrey Plaza's face, but it's so well done. It's really, in this episode. really it looks cool. Really cool. I also like 18th century Green Witch as well. Mm-hmm. I thought the cloak and a kind of oh, uh, the whole dress was yeah. just really, really well done. Well, I was going to talk about it later on, but I'll talk about it here because I thought one of the interesting little costume touches, the 18th century death, does look like her cloak is made of moss almost. Yeah, exactly. Whereas this version of death looks like a tree it looks like the um the way the cloth is it's not a pure green it's this um multicolored tree uh, look to it that's what it feels like it feels like bark rather than uh, rather than moss so it's so. got browns and greens mm-hmm. in there yeah, yeah exactly yeah beautiful yeah. beautiful costume yeah. the other costume we have is the full on wiccan costume yes we well, do because oh, we wow. have wiccan aka billy mm-hmm a.k.a. William, uh, coming in um, to help protect Agatha here. I think uh, it looks so power. cool. And it look, it's it's one of the most comic accurate MCU costumes that we've seen um, yeah. for quite a long time. A lot of them uh, don't translate very well to the screen and aren't, aren't directly taken over from the comic. But this is like his first appearance on the front cover of uh, of the Young Avengers. Uh, this is exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Um, I mean, the crayon. The, the crayon's more is, stylized for the show. But. The thing is as well, he he's unaware of why Rio is attacking Agatha mm-hmm. here because ultimately uh, the standoff between Agatha and Death is because um, Agatha hasn't upheld her end of the deal that mm-hmm. she made. Um, so it's Agatha that's going to be coming with you're coming with me, effectively, yep. Death says, yeah. uh, because Billy is not there to to be taken. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like this, and but it also plays out um, a bit later on in this battle because yeah, Billy doesn't know why why this is happening, um, but comes to the rescue anyway. And it's great to see the costume, yeah. but it's also then again interestingly that he trusts her yeah. to feed from his power mm-hmm. um and she does cut it off in time but you do see him aging and withering yes. from the power being taken which it's is quite, really, it's quite really subtle. interesting um, yeah it is subtle. and i think and i think part of that i know it's i know it was a joke earlier on in the season about when he was in his maleficent costume um where he was talking about his cheekbones <laughs> and saying that you know if you can if you can wear this costume you got great cheekbones but interestingly as she's kind of sucking the life out of him uh, it, it's supposed to be on the cheekbones that you're seeing it you're supposed to see his face kind of hollow in as we see in the ninth episode uh, as the essence is pulled out of other witches uh, it is their faces start to sink but i guess because he's quite a thin guy with good cheek Bones, um, you don't notice it as much, but I like the subtlety of it. You're not sure whether yeah. uh, it, it is going to be Agatha taking all of his power, or whether she will relent, whether she will, whether his trust is placed in the right person. Uh, one other interesting touch that I like here is that the neighbors are looking on, yeah. going, "Is it happening again?" Yeah, I, I wasn't sure whether they could see Rio or not. Um, I don't think they can, could. I think they just see a storm coming in, and they're worried that. This is like the battle that Agatha had with Wanda at the end of season one of WandaVision. Mm. So um, so I, I just like that the neighbors are going, what is going on? Please don't say we're going to be in for more magic spells that will destroy our lives again. Yeah, and it's interesting that sort of when Billy is leaving, mm. um, you see them all looking at him. Mm-hmm. Like they don't recognize him because yeah. he looks like William Kaplan. Of course. Not, not an older version of the Billy that they knew. Mm. And equally... He doesn't um, 
kind of recognize them. Yeah. He has no memory of any, every, anything before, so he's well. He just kind of puts his hoodie up and walks away, yeah. but he doesn't. He doesn't talk to them. In I guess he's, he's he's still a teen. Of his cape. <laughs> he's still a teen, though. He just puts his hoodie up and ignores <laughs> all the adults well, that are around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they smell the adults. <laughs> exactly. But I just kind of thought it was you know, given that we had. Um, young Billy living as a neighbor to all yeah. of these other characters that he might have said hello or um, said something. But again, he's probably hiding that. He doesn't want them to know who he is, I suppose. But uh, but I just thought it was interesting to have that. But the, the fight that we get here between Agatha and uh, Death when Billy has handed over some of his power to Agatha, I just thought was really interesting. There's one line that I didn't hear the first time we watched it, but saw in the subtitles where Death says to Agatha, um, Oh, power looks good on you. And Agatha responds with, yeah, baby, everything looks good on me. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's a great Agatha line. It's really good. And it's all kind of done in the background because, yeah. Uh, yeah, death has just kind of like flicked um, Billy mm-hmm. through the greenhouse effectively. Yeah. But I like, like that he gets his own back and flicks it through the house, though. Yeah, like, no, so it, it just shows he was caught off guard. It's not that he's not powerful. No, uh, like, absolutely. Yeah. But ultimately, Agatha is there saying, you know, this is futile. You can't fight death. Mm-hmm. And you have death coming back saying, you know, I want my soul effectively. Um, yeah. And I like Billy steps up to say, take me. I mean, this this is kind of interesting. I'm not entirely sure I figured out why certain why this was the case, but he says, "Take me," mm-hmm. um, and I like the fact that Agatha effectively goes to betray Billy and says, "Okay, then that's fine." And starts <laughs> to walk off. It is to the point uh, before that you know Agatha does actually betray him here, yes, and walks off, and. Um, it's only with his mind talking, at saying and infiltrating into her mind, saying, is this how Nikki died? Mm-hmm. That it kind of stays her feet effectively yeah. from walking further away yeah. and turning around to uh, snog death effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, and But it's interesting because she was there ready to betray him. She was. Um I took that as this is has been Agatha's personality for so long that she's willing to just play along with it further. Um, so there's two char- there's two other characters in this scene who both see who Agatha really is underneath all of the bluster, underneath yeah. all of the cover that she's put on herself for the last 250 years. One is death, as, as we said, that moment when death said to her, why do you let people believe these things about you? Yeah. And the other here is Billy because Billy is is holding Agatha and telling her she's a good person. And she says, you're the only one that believes that of me. Nobody else in the world believes that I'm a good person. So it's almost as if when Agatha's walking away and sacrificing Billy, and she is sacrificing, absolutely, but it's almost as if, well, when he goes away, there's nobody else in the world that will believe this and I can go on with my immortal life. And she's made that agreement with Rio, with death, that she will live a very long life if uh, Billy has taken. Yeah, and I, I think as well it, it comes back to something from the episode nine uh-huh. where, you know, she says how Billy reminds her of Nicholas mm-hmm. in some of the things that he says yeah. and some of his mannerisms. So in that moment, that also makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, that that would stay her, you know, and um, but it, it isn't. It isn't just. I, I suppose that there's there's more to it than just the line of Billy um, saying to her, "Is they say Nikki died." It's it's much more to it than just I said one words and she changed her mind. It's that choice that she makes, and we'll definitely talk about this in episode nine. It's the choice that she made after Nikki died to then just go full bore, bad guy kill everything in her wake to make sure that her life lasts forever. She's realizing in this moment that her son would never have wanted her to do that. And Billy is reminding her of that, that her son was really compassionate. We saw that, or we will see that as we talk about it in in the next piece. But it's that moment of realization for her that actually maybe I've made the wrong choice to stay alive by sacrificing other people. And I, I think this, in a sense... So I really like these two episodes, but it, to me, it's that they're out of kilter. Okay. Um, yeah. That episode nine to me feels like something that should have been sprinkled lovingly mm. through the whole of this season. Okay. Um, in some way, mm. and apart from the right at the end, mm-hmm. um, 
in order for that to make more sense. Okay. As episode eight, watching episode eight. Yes, you've got episode nine then mm-hmm. and so on. But it's like, here's the dump after the fact to tell you what we need. Oh, and okay. I right. kind of, and because to me, up till then, all the way through then, it's you cannot trust Agatha. Mm. And Billy he, he is being told this. Yeah. And he's even said it to her. So anyway, nonetheless, it is rectified to, for me in episode nine. Mm-hmm. Yep. Gosh, I like this anyway because I do think the death of, firstly, the betrayal of Agatha, even though I anticipated it, mm-hmm. I was surprised it still that she did yep. because I thought they were kind of moving past that. Mm-hmm. But I think it was always the danger. Um but also the death of um, of Agatha, I just thought was really well done. I thought it was dead striking, really. Yeah. Um, I kind of wasn't expecting her to die. And, of course, we see that she doesn't fully die. Mm-hmm. Her corporal form is retained in ghost form. Absolutely. Um, which is really cool, um, certainly given... Um, the video game Midnight Suns. Well, yes, yeah, where she, we see yeah. her in ghost form as well. But in in comic books, the reason why the video game took that yeah. is because in comic books, Agatha is a ghost uh, yeah. and has been a guide for Wanda. She she is in the ghostly form. She's been around for many many years, uh, and there are times when she is a ghost. But yeah, it's just fun because we played about a hundred hours of Midnight Suns. I think we played it through twice. <laughs> yeah, and Agatha is a really central character in that, and this is the only form of Agatha I've ever seen. And a lot of is that version in the uh, oh, no, in exactly. the video game. So um, so now we're like, oh, she's they've, they've now got a comic accurate ghostly version of yeah, Agatha, yeah, exactly, Agatha exactly. which I really liked. Um, I also like the fact, and I know it's probably an obvious pun, but I love the fact that it's the kiss of death uh, that, yeah, exactly. that she gets quite literally, uh, that, and that's uh, what what takes. Agatha. I love all the the uh, kind of the 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 flower and shroom uh, mm-hmm. mound that forms um, yeah. the in the garden. I just think it's really pretty. Absolutely, the green witch, the uh, goddess yeah, of growth exactly. and decay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's exactly really what happened. Pretty. I thought it was thought it was cool. Um, and again, in retrospect, after watching the ninth episode, I like that we have. Rio death standing over the grave of Agatha for a moment. Um, there's definitely a tear in her eye at that yeah. moment as well. Uh, very similar to Agatha over uh, Nikki's yeah. uh, grave later. And she turns to Billy to say, you know, you may go. Yeah. I don't need to collect your soul. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, she does. And Billy goes back home. And, um, you know, we get kind of the wrap up that you would think this is the final episode. Um, Billy is talking to his parents saying you know how sorry he is and uh, explains to them what happened uh, off screen and then goes back to his bedroom and then that's the moment when everything flips on its head um, and the real reveal happens and this is partly why I think episode 9 works really well for me because just like the road itself episode 8 leading into episode 9 makes this show it's a circular show Um if you didn't catch the idea that Billy had created the road uh, earlier on in the season that we, when we were talking about, if you didn't catch that and you get to episode nine, you find all of the cons and all of the twists and turns, you're going to want to go back to the start of the season and, and watch Agatha's performance throughout the season so far. All of the times that she was told, um, you lead us on the road, you're the guide and avoided it anything <laughs> like that avoid of providing any guidance because she'd never been on the road before yeah um i mean it's certainly been signposted for sure yeah and because even you know not only about uh billy's room mm-hmm. or william's room and, and seeing that but it, it, it's also um the notion that agatha really didn't know what she was doing on yeah. the road as well absolutely and she was trying to she wasn't doing any of the tasks the first task she tried to avoid being involved in it because it must have just come as an absolute shock to her that she's suddenly on this uh, famed road and being told you've been here hundreds of times before or you've been here before and we know you can you can lead us so yeah um so i thought i thought that was uh, a really good moment when we have his realization when he's looking through um looking through all of the posters in his room and going, hang on a second, did I do this? And then we hear the cackling of uh, of Agatha in the background. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed yeah. the walk through of, of all those markers mm-hmm. um, of the road in his bedroom. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was really good. Yeah. Uh, definitely. I know we're only in the middle of our spells, John, but that's kind of the end of episode 
Ace. Would you like to give your rating for episode eight? Do you defend episode eight? Oh, I do. Uh, I give this four road closures out of five. <laughs> very um, good. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, as I say, I I thought it was very visual still, and mm-hmm. I I liked how it concluded. I loved the fight between Rio and uh, Agatha. I liked seeing sort of Billy in full uniform, effectively. Mm-hmm. I liked the little twist. Um, here uh, and final reveal that it is billy yeah. who's able like his mother to manipulate his and other people's reality i love the call out from lilia's uh reading to him the card reading that she did where it calls back to her going you are the magician you can turn all your goals into reality which yeah. is what he quite literally exactly. did with the road. um it was really good uh just sort of piecing all that together mm-hmm. um you know it was really good I think for 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 me, um, I kind of just need the latter part of episode nine mm. would have bolted on really nicely here. Yeah, uh, with the, with that and the the eighteenth century stuff just peppered throughout to give that sort of developing story of Agatha and her son. Right, right. Um, but that's just my own personal mm-hmm. view. It's easy to say. Um, it's difficult to write that, you know, (laughs) Um, but I still like episode nine, you know, and we'll get to that. But um, this, I really enjoyed. Give it four road closures out of five. Well, let's get on to our our next spell then. Let's get on to episode nine with spell number four. Agatha's other deal with death. Yeah. Back in uh, 1750, we have a pregnant Agatha. Um, running through the woods or uh, seems to be really in pain, um, very close to delivery of her child, I guess, uh, as well. But she's on her own. She is a covenless witch and she's running through the forest here pregnant. Um, The one thing that I was really surprised about, because this episode is so focused on giving you our backstory of who Agatha is and why she becomes the let's say villainous character that she is when we meet her first in WandaVision, why she is that villainous character. That's what this episode's all about. What I was really surprised about is she's already in the relationship with death and death has already given her, as she described it, uh, more protection than any other living being. Mm. Um, I kind of thought we'd get that meeting of her and death. We'd get a bit of their relationship maybe at some point during this flashback episode and why Agatha has been gifted with this, uh, long lasting life um the inability to die uh, or why she's killing witches and that's allowing her to extend her life it's all peppered in in dialogue um to nicholas but she dumbs it down a bit for him because <laughs> he's only six um when they're having their conversations she doesn't really say why she's doing what she's doing but she says she does it to keep her alive and at the beginning here she's having so much trouble with the birth of her son, we see death arriving to take Nicholas away, um, to take Agatha's son. And Agatha's pleading with death saying, you can't take him. Please don't take him. Yeah. And all death offers her, all death can offer her is to give time with yeah. her son. No, I mean, th- this was, um, I-, I-, I found this really kind of affecting actually, because, mm-hmm. um, I think, that kind of brutality of death here. Yeah. But and I know this is going to sound a bit weird, I think, but but the beauty of what she's wearing with the green, and I think it's that kind of stark contrast, and I think that's why um, I, no- I noticed that sort of bright green flowing cloak, mm-hmm. um, you know, and the kind of corseted, dress with that intricate lace work mm-hmm. and it really stood out and it but it, then it stood out on you know in in contrast to kind of in a sense the the coldness of the the kind of brutality of taking an unborn child mm-hmm. you know which is what Agatha is pleading for and I, I just thought this was really kind of stark and that's why yeah. then Agatha holding the newborn Nicholas, but realizing um, that 
she's only got so much time you know it it's the tragedy of that and, and we get yeah. that um where she says you know i can um i can trick a feeble mind into doing what i what i want mm-hmm. i can do all these spells have all this power um but i can't divine when she'll return you know i I don't know when death is going to come back for yeah. you yeah um, it's like living on that knife edge you know it, can, it can be and i suppose that's the that's the interesting way that i take these scenes and i don't think of this as much magic here um what death offers agatha in this moment is what every parent has when their child is born um None of us knows how long our time is going to be on Earth. None of us knows how long we're going to have with our children or with our parents. Um, no, yeah, you know, absolutely. W- when your child is born, you could die and in certainly childbirth. not in seventeen fifty. Absolutely, she could have died in childbirth yeah. right there after Nicholas. But that's Nic- what I Nicky's assumed born, yeah. was happening. That's why yeah. death showed up. Mm. So she would never have any time with um, with Nicholas. Mm. It wasn't. So it, it was almost going to be. A stillborn um yeah that, he, he, so actually yeah. death does provide life to nicholas mm-hmm. but on a time limited basis because she should have taken him then yes and all the way through it it's the mention that you look sickly or exactly you look ill you're you know you need some you need to be fed yeah and to 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 put color in your cheeks, it's that sickly look. Yeah, um, and absolutely, Agatha enjoys all the time she has, and that's really wonderful. But it's also it's it's the other side of it's the yin and the yang of that. Where yes, she's making to some degree the most of her time. She's using him as a a law to yes. to kill people. Yeah. and I do like the fact that you have Nicholas say, well. Why do you kill witches? Mm-hmm. And she says to survive. And he's like, right. "Well, can't we survive with those witches mm-hmm. without you killing them?" And of course, because of the deal with death, you know that she'll provide these dead bodies. For yeah. It. Well, it, that's what, again. That's the thing. I wish there's a little more clarity on. Yeah. I wish there was just that scene where we saw the deal. Agreed. You know, because um, it feels like a third deal. The, there's yeah. a deal that she will provide. Um the bodies of witches yeah. because Agatha is able to take all their power and wither them on the vine, mm-hmm. um, which means they die quicker than what they would normally do. Yeah. Um, and the gets deal the yeah. for Nicholas's life yeah. and in that moment, as well as then the deal we see with death to, to try and give Billy's life over to her. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I wish we'd seen the deal because yeah. you could. You, the other way the show has explained this to us is if she lives with, with a coven of witches, at some point she'll annoy them enough that they'll attack her and she'll suck the life out of them and take their magic. And then they will try and kill her again. Mm-hmm. Um, or they would kill Nikki if the two of them were there, if she did this in their company. Um, or they even learned that she'd done it before, that they would kill her and Nikki. That's that's kind of what the show is telling us. But it does seem like she had made this deal that she can live technically she can live forever if she continues to provide the bodies yes. of witches. Is what it, that's that's what I believe the offer is and what the what the deal yeah, is with uh, with Rio with death. Um but I just wish that had been a little bit more clear. Um and also it feels like that deal extends to Nikki when she kills witches and takes their essence, takes their power. It keeps Nikki alive for a bit longer as well. Is what it seems like. Yeah, I I, I didn't think? really think of it like that, but you're right because the time where he then just doesn't want to go through with the ruse. Yeah, um, where he, so where he's too Agatha sick. gets yeah. her sort of five five portions a day, and mm-hmm. um, then you have death coming for him that night. Yes. So, um, it could be, it could be linked. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, I know this, uh, I don't know whether this means anything again, because this is the last episode of the season, so I don't know whether we'll ever return to this, but interestingly, that moment when he refuses and says he's too sick, he says his mother needs him home, and that night he dies. And his mother, Agatha, is in the room there with him. 
Rio and, and Agatha have had a relationship in the past, and I wonder if that is him saying my other mother. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, Rio needs him home. If he knew, because Could he be, yeah, he yeah. walks out the door and disappears. Yeah, um, as Agatha walks out with him. So I don't know. I just I, it was just something about the way that line was delivered by uh, by Nikki, where he says his mother needs him home. Um, I just thought that was that was uh, representative of the couple that's there of yeah. Agatha and Rio. So, um, but the other big thing that happens throughout this here is just this really cute um, traveling tale or traveling song that nikki kicks kicks off yeah, yeah. Um, and the windy road yeah. yeah and it's instant like you you catch it instantly they've done such a great job winding the song into the series so far the yeah, minute definitely. he starts to sing it you go oh that's the that's the witch's road that he's singing um and this it turns out to be their song they created together as a lot of parents do with the kids having a little song together a little story that they create together um for their travel throughout the harsh life that they have living in forests <laughs> everywhere that's it um, that, i mean yeah. I, I like that they sing and develop it together mm-hmm. you know to, yeah. uh, as they're they're traveling together on the road yeah. and it's to entertain themselves but then you know the last a uh, moment we see it being used to entertain a tavern yeah. uh, and to effectively pique the interests of of other witches mm-hmm. who were there yeah. and to lure them into Agatha's power-hungry, um, self-centered heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of, I quite like this. I thought it's it's both cute and then it's, it, it's manipulated... Mm-hmm more and more by Agatha um, to the point that with the death of Nikki yeah. that evening, then we kind of have that montage of her then using the law as in L-O-R-E, because uh-huh. uh, I'm northern, you see. So if I say law <laughs> and law, the it's, <laughs> they sound exactly the same. Yes. Um, yes, so, you, could, you couldn't do that very famous podcast. No, exactly. Right. <laughs> so law, as in the law of the, the witch's road, the uh-huh. L-O-R-E, yes. you know, it just um, pulls in, as we see over time, yeah. all these other witches um, to the sort of vacuum that is Agatha. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just just before that that moment, though, as after Nikki dies, I do think there's a really stunning scene that Catherine Han plays after he dies, where she's shouting, "Going, no, I want more time." Um, yeah, you know. And I think again, as I said earlier on, regardless of this being a show about magic, I kind of think that's what happens if you're a parent that sadly has lost a child. Um, no matter when it happens, that you want more time, even though you've always been told that your time is limited on the planet. Um, you know, it will, it will never be enough. Um, you will always want more time. And I think this just the way Catherine Hand play, plays that moment. And then as she's sitting by Nikki's grave, mourning him, she says the line that defines the rest of her character, defines the next centuries, which is, I bury my heart here with you, my child. Um, yeah. Agatha is often described as being heartless um, from one division all the way through to, uh, to Agatha all along. She's being described as heartless many, many times. Um, and that's the moment her heart died with her child dying is, mm. is what she's saying there. Um, and very quickly, a witch comes up and says to her, hang, hang on a second. I noticed that that song that that's sung by Agatha. She, she recognizes that song. You must know the witch's road. Um, and Agatha concocts her plan very quickly in her head. Um, this is a great way to, to lure in covens. Um, and it's wonderfully filmed. These uh, these centuries of uh, of taking witches' powers um, oh, as absolutely. the song and just gets more powerful. And as yeah. it goes into the singing of the witches' road yeah. by um, by Lilia, Alice, Jen, and Mrs. Hart, uh-huh. um, and then it actually working, and you sort of transported back to that that moment earlier in in the season. Yeah. So yeah, it was really good. And. We get the signature Catherine Han look straight into the camera and go, wow. Like, um, she just has that moment going, hang on a second, how the hell did this work? I created this <laughs> this song with my child and suddenly there is a path into the witch's road? How the hell did that happen? Uh, love it. Love that moment. Uh, it's, it's the opposite of a wink into the camera. It's a shock face into the camera. Uh, so really enjoyed that. And that takes us right up to date and right into our spell number five, the true end of the road. Yes. And we're back to the end of last episode with uh, with Agatha in uh, in Billy's room. Um, 
doing her boo because now she's a ghost. <laughs> so we see her um, incorporeal form now. Is that right? Yeah. Her translucent form. Um, uh, looking very different uh, from uh, from how we've seen her in the past. Uh, but she's getting very, get, starting to get used to yeah. uh, living in this world. Well, so, and yeah. she says, you know, I died. I did die, mm-hmm. but I took a calculated risk. Yes. So even in that moment of seemingly self, uh, you know, um, selfless sacrifice, mm-hmm. She was taking a calculated risk that this particular magic would work and she would come back as a ghost. But oh, she, as she says, yeah. still figuring out the rules as yeah. she tries to slap Billy, uh, but effectively yes. is giving him air slaps. Um, <laughs> I do really like that. Which was really good. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Um, I was wondering what the calculated risk was, actually. That puts, that, that makes a lot more uh, a lot more sense. She did not sacrifice herself for Billy, she says. Um, and I was wondering, was the calculated risk, would death really take her? given their relationship in the past, when she yeah. goes up and kisses Rio, kisses death, uh, would death actually take her? I thought that was the calculated mm-hmm. risk. But no, it makes it makes sense that she had a backup plan. <laughs> if she died, she'd come back as a ghost. Exactly. And then it, it talked, you know, the, there's that moment coming back of Billy um, realizing that the road was made by him, mm-hmm. but him getting um, racked with guilt oh, at yeah. the idea that, well, actually his projection his reality that he created killed um lilia uh, on the road mm-hmm. alice on the road uh, and mrs hart as well sure, uh, sh- yeah. sh- well <laughs> the, the lady next door i who's love that? that who's that from uh, the, agatha really uh, the good. gardening woman <laughs> yeah but again i know it's i know this is obvious but i, w- I will say it because i say obvious things all the time all the time now that you've seen the history of agatha up until this point how many witches lives she's taken over time the idea that she couldn't remember yeah, yeah, Sharon Davis, couldn't remember her name, couldn't particularly place just another dead person. Um, you know, I kind of get it there. Yeah, definitely. And again, you have Agatha being very truthful. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you work out, you actually saved a life, uh, yep. Jen's life, because on day one, I was doing exactly what I'd done over the course of the previous kind of two and a half centuries mm-hmm. three three and a half centuries um which was i was going to kill them all to take their power yeah um the only one really um lilia sacrificed herself yeah. alice well i killed it's mrs hart who is the the death yeah the <laughs> The, the true, I guess, non-witch death yeah. here. And that's um, why she said to Billy after after she died, that's why she said to him, um, I didn't think you had it in you, kid, um, because he killed someone. Yeah. That was, you know, literally quite quickly after they got on the, got on the road. Uh, that's when she dies. But Jen is alive, and we have a, a quick flash to Jen crawling out from under the ground at the opening of Westview and flying off very similar to Wanda with her powers. <laughs> no, definitely. Didn't she fly off quite similar to, to uh, well, Wanda Maximoff? I don't Maximoff? understand why she appeared from under the ground. Because they were underground. by Agatha's house. Yeah, because they were actually underground. Um, that's what the train system that we saw a couple of episodes ago. That it, there was a thing that Sharon Davis said about uh, underneath Westview, the only thing you'll find is a tram system, a subway system, that's uh, or a trolley system, whatever it was, that's, um, that's been broken down for years. And we actually saw the trolley system. Uh, Jen was beside it um, and Lily is beside it. So um, so they were underground at some point, um, yeah. just not on the Witch's Road. It was just, uh, I guess, covered by the um, the imagination of Billy to look mm. like the Witch's Road. So, yeah. Yes, they were underground at some point. But yeah, Jen's Jen's off out in the ether. Hopefully, we'll see her again in the future. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, it'd be great if we. If it feels as though Lilia gave her quite an important tag. Um, yeah. you know, as the future. Yeah. Uh, so that would be quite interesting uh. to see if we see Jen again. Yeah. But then Billy goes, effectively out being wrapped with guilt. Um, like. Initially, so I thought when he was doing the pentagram and putting mm-hmm. the candles out and everything, I thought this was to try and bring back Lilia, mm-hmm. Alice, and Mrs. Hart mm-hmm. to undo what he was doing. But in the end, he's trying to banish Agatha to send her towards the light to Rio's toxic embrace, he says. Uh-huh. And so he's there sort of reca- chanting uh, the, the Latin to banish Agatha you see Agatha starting to fade, and but then 
sort of a last gasp attempt to try and grab the locket that mm-hmm. he's got of hers, which is the personal item required for the the spell. Yeah. In the end, he she manages to knock the locket out because, you know, he's screaming at her, why are you still here? And she's like, because I can't face him, I Nicholas yeah. Scratch. And in that sort of outpouring she's able to connect with her locket and knock it out of billy's hand to yeah. stop this this spell um i think i think billy also stopped it because of that admission from um no from absolutely yeah. absolutely um as i say i just felt this maybe went a little it felt quick it felt a little out of the blue um like he's trying to actually banish her here yeah. get rid of her and I know that moment, and it all comes from what we've seen. Yeah, but Billy didn't see that. But Billy didn't see that. Gotcha, yeah. And yeah. Billy wasn't told about it. I mean, even if mm. it was done in a way that it was Agatha telling yeah. them of Nicholas Scratch. Yeah. A bit like Agatha actually trying to correct the record that, Rio has mm. said, why do you let them think the worst of you? Mm-hmm. And begins to tell her tale. Well, I do also think there's a big way it could have been fixed, and an easy way it could have been fixed. Uh, Billy's a mind reader. We've seen him been able to read everybody's yeah. mind. So if it just had that moment where he gets the rush of the memories that uh, exactly. we've just yeah, seen well, on yeah. screen, yeah. Uh, and then she says, well, I can't face Nicholas, you go, okay, well, I understand that now. Because this is all based, it all hinges on the choice that Agatha made to go and destroy every coven of witches and use the song that her son created to take out more and more witches over the centuries. It all hinges on that decision that she made that she couldn't possibly face her son, Nicholas, who she lost at such a young age. Um, and if you don't buy into that, and if you don't get that, then you would think that Agatha is just a bad person who has no possible redeeming features. But this is her moment of redemption, the start of her arc of redemption, let's say. I don't think she's ever redeemed during the show, Agatha, all along. But this moment of her going, I couldn't possibly face him, is her realizing how bad she's actually been since her son died. Or, or what she's already and has always known, but has suppressed it so much. Mm. And you're right. Totally, totally get that. Um but it's not in her power. Mm-hmm. It's in Billy's. And Billy knows her as the person that Wanda effectively destroys mm-hmm. um, and has been told not to trust her. So what I mean is it's like it's kind of like mental warfare, really, mm-hmm. in the sense that, you know, for eight episodes, we've been saying don't trust this person. Yeah. Final episodes, you do. But the point at which you are told to do to that she is good and can be trusted is mm. kind of in that final moment. And you're like, I just feel the balance is off mm-hmm. possibly yep. in the storytelling. Um, not that I disagree with what's happening. Yep. And that, that's the thing. Um, and it's easier said than done, as I said. Um, I do think it leaves the character of Agatha in a place where she can still be the same <laughs> antagonistic Agatha that I we've seen so. for WandaVision and Agatha all along. She's not redeemed, I don't think. There's just a moment where Billy's going to say, well, I won't banish her. I understand somehow. Um, I understand why she doesn't want to be, want to go and die and then see Nicholas and face him. And I'm going to team up with her to go and find um, my brother. Yeah, I know. I, I think it was just like the stairway to heaven sort of, oh! with the bright lights and it's like let's we we could be a good team mm. i mean effectively creating a coven of two here yes you know which um, is a, which is a joke from earlier on yeah, the season when to when, go and find yeah. tommy is so, it is a coven true or coven of two and it's this yeah. is a coven of two exactly. it's not necessarily a coven true though <laughs> um i just feel it could have been woven in so this didn't feel like it came out of the blue okay all right that, I, don't, that, I don't think it came out of, the, out of the blue myself, but I, I take it. I understand. Uh, I understand. But your, I still enjoyed it. it. Yeah, yeah. And that closes out the episode. The two of them yeah. now going off on their on their quest to uh, to find Tommy, and I hope they find him soon. Just by that description of um, a bullied kid who was drowned by people in a, in an area in a town where he has no family and no friends, um, mm. doesn't 
bode well for po- poor Tommy suddenly arriving back. At yeah. least, at least when Billy went into William's body, he had parents that were taking care of him and, and helped him for three years, and then had a boyfriend who was side by side with him, taking care of him. Tommy doesn't sound like he's in anywhere close to that no, position. It's no. not going to be a good place. So hopefully they find him soon, and we don't just have. Um, Agatha all along season two coming in five years time and they're all <laughs> they're all in their 20s and uh, and all the bad things happen to poor Tommy but if Tommy has the powers of the Tommy that we know in one division uh, he can run away at least yeah and I mean ultimately they'll find him in time for young Avengers hopefully hopefully although if they take their time on that it'll be old <laughs> Avengers new Avengers I yeah guess. well that's true <laughs> um any notes, anything else we haven't talked about that you want to just bring into this final discussion on this episode? No, I've got uh, no notes, really, um, for the rest, for the for the, the two episodes. Mm. There's just one cool scene or one cool moment that I really liked when uh, Billy's in this banishing place in the basement for, for Agatha. I just love that he uses his powers to get a spell book back. Um, just the way he uses uses the power and moves uh, to get his spellbook back so that he can banish Agatha. I thought it was really cool because he left it down the road. So, um, so that's cool. Yeah, I, I also, well, I should say, I also like that uh, Billy uh, makes a kind of memorial to mm. um, Alice, Lilia, and uh, Sharon. Do you know the way that was done, I must say, when I watched it, I had a bit of a tear in my eye. I thought it was really yeah, lovely. I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, yeah. They seal off the road with this seal of the names of the fallen witches. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think actually I do have a, an, another note, which is, um, yeah, we have no post credit or mid credit scene yeah. uh, at all, which is kind of interesting. All season, nothing. Not a one on any episode. I know. At all, which is a shock. You usually have one uh, post credit scene. I think. I think every show that they've had has had one at least uh, in one episode, but there's never any in this in this season. Um, I think the only thing that actually changed was just the title card, Agatha, all along in episode um, eight when it's revealed, or when Billy has that moment of realisation in episode eight, the title card of Agatha all along goes over his bedroom rather than over the uh, the forest that we've seen for the, uh, other, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other seven episodes. I thought that was a cool little uh, change in those credits because nothing else changed. Um, but it was just, oh, hang on a second, we're actually just been looking at his wall the whole time yeah. rather than looking at the forest. Excellent. Yeah, so, quite cool. So, John, do you defend the finale of Agatha all along or the finale of WandaVision season two, as I'm going to be calling it in my head? Yes. Uh, yes, I do. I do defend this episode. Um, I give it three and a half uh, witching wonders out of five. Mm. Um, again, I really, really enjoyed this. Mm. Um, I loved seeing 1750 Agatha. I loved the backstory with Nicholas. Sometimes I just wonder why are shows holding certain things back? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to me, this should have kind of been about Billy and Agatha and that whole showdown with death Mm -hmm. in Westview, uh, to be honest, and to come straight back into 750. Love the backstory. Absolutely love it. Absolutely wanted it. Um, But I kind of wanted that to be sort of as expertly placed and peppered through this series as... It's just my own Mm -hmm. choice. Um. In the same way that you got the hints around Billy being the one creating okay. the rose. Yeah. I don't know. It felt like, as I say, like you're being told not to put your hand in the fire. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. And then one person says, put your hand in the fire. And then you put your hand in the fire. Okay. Despite all everything up until then mm. saying don't trust her and you even have agatha being untrustworthy um by seemingly giving billy up to death mm. so the whole kind of going off in the sunset to rescue tommy i love it yep. but i just i wanted it kind of it's more a structure thing for me i think on um on on the series, but I enjoyed everything that was contained in episode nine, mm. and actually, um, seeing that again, you know, second time through, mm-hmm. it do, it does connect much better. Yeah, uh, but I, I still hold that I think um, this would have been nice peppered through because, as I said at the start, this felt like 
you know, the, the, the mythology, the tale of the witch's road that ultimately is a story, but somehow ends up being like, you know, the lost cities of gold, uh-huh. you know, yeah, people that. go searching for it. Yeah. And it's a manipulation of the reality in the same way that uh, Billy had done through the road. And yeah. that those two sort of contrasting off one another through this show, I think would have been really good. and that evolution of Agatha and uh, Rio's or death's relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, I think would have been really good. But yeah, for me, I do defend um, this episode Mm -hmm. uh, with three and a half uh, witching wonders out of five. Excellent. Derek, uh, do you defend um, episode nine of Agatha all along? Yes, I absolutely do. I think I'm a lot, a lot higher on the, on these last two episodes than you are, John. Um, I really enjoyed them. And I think keeping back the true nature of what happened to Agatha and, and who she has been for these last couple of centuries kind of allowed me as a viewer of the show for the last eight episodes to go, oh, actually, maybe she's not that bad. Maybe she just misunderstood, <laughs> you know. Um, and then you realize, well, actually, she made a decision. Um that that moment in episode nine where you realize she made her decision when her son died that that's it her heart is gone she is going to be the bad one um i kind of like that because there's so many redemption stories of villains now that's something that people want to do all the time that they try to do it with the joker um you know this idea that behind every villain is a is a, a reason why they're as villainous as they are they're not just bad guys so having it done this way with Agatha was it was refreshing it was it was different it was it was interesting I do think the two things I'm really missing from the show are the deal with death um that Agatha made that that may, means she gives over witches for centuries I think that's quite important to find out that that's her deal and that's the only deal death is willing to give her and that's why she won't keep Nicholas Scratch alive forever um because she's already got that deal we never saw the deal in the show uh, I just thought it was weird that we didn't and having Billy being able to read her mind and learn the story so that that's why he forgives her. I think those are two things you could have could have done and probably should have been in the ninth episode. Um, but overall, I think the series has been so interesting and it feels like this was out there. This is the series I did not expect to enjoy oh, as much as I did. Um, we went into it going, well, this would be a bit of fun. It's a Marvel show. We, we love Marvel shows. And it's been a lot more than a bit of fun. It's been a really enjoyable show each week i've really enjoyed uh, theorizing again because we don't get to do that very often in, in marvel shows anymore and um, they kind of put everything on the table and tell you what's actually happening so uh, the show being as twisty and turny as uh, as wandavision season one um has made it great i really really enjoyed it yeah excellent stuff i think with that it is off for a drinky poos yes. at the Agatha All Along Cauldron Quiz. Yeah, I need a flag in that ale, John, after that. Yes, yeah. indeed. We have two questions, fellow defenders, mm-hmm. fellow quizzes. Uh, for episode eight, the question is, how long has Billy been gone from his home when he returns to his parents' house? Mm. Yeah, this is a bit of a surprise to me. So, uh, yes. so definitely go check that out. Uh, you'll, you'll see it in the episode. John, do you want to get the question one more time? Yes. How long has Billy been gone from his home when he returns to his parents' house? Very good. And the final question for episode nine, John. How many covens do we see Agatha take out with the con of the Witch's Road following the death of Nicholas? Fantastic. In that cool scene. And we're not going to include the uh, the coven uh, with Alice and Lilia and Jen because that coven wasn't taken out, right? It's just the other covens that, that yes. Agatha took out. Do you want to get the question one more time, John? How many covens do we see Agatha take out with the con of the Witch's Road following the death of Nicholas? That's it. That's nine questions you've got now for Agatha all along. If you want, if you've missed any of them, pop on over to our website at tvpodcastindustries.com. There's a pub quiz section there that has all nine questions. And send us in your correct answers to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com and you could be in a chance of getting your hands on some Agatha goodies. We want to hear from you. Get them into us as soon as possible. And as soon as the making of episode for Agatha is out, we will be recording our uh, our final episode of the Agatha All Along podcast, which will reveal all the answers to those questions as well and the winner of our pub quiz. Excellent stuff. Let us get on to our feedback section. 
our first bit of feedback is actually in episode seven. I came in just after we'd finished our recording. Um, I came in from the Joyful Baker, who says, Hi again. Loved episode seven. What a ride. Lilia was wonderful, and this one gave me all the feels. I was wondering about the writing on the table she was sitting at with her teacher, since it was the same shape as the table in the task. On the side of the top, it has the Latin, In nave expeditus, sis tam seller quam ventus. I hope I've pronounced that close to uh, close to <laughs> how it's supposed to be written. But um, the Joyful Baker says, Google says that it translates to be swift in the ship as swift as the wind. A search for the saying came up with nothing. But when you look for ships and tarot cards, the ship is commonly featured in the art of the death card. However, not Rio's death card in the show. Interesting. Very excited for the last two episodes next week. Cheers, the Joyful Baker. I had to have a look into this. Oh, um, excellent stuff. Yeah, just, yeah. I, I just looked a little bit further, um, and apparently the full phrase on the table is in nave expeditus sis tam seller quam ventus morse, which apparently adds the word morse, which is death. So it actually translates to you are as fast as the wind of death on a ship. So I would think that's a reference to the fact that Lilia has been out running death for as long as she has, because she hasn't been accepting her fate. She's been running away from death and now has realized this is her end. Uh, and that's why it's on the table. That's what I think. That would certainly make sense mm. because that's, I, I, I mean, in a sense, that's the whole episode yeah. um, of her trying to face up to death. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great catch, uh, Joyful Baker, uh, on the side of the table. And I, I love this stuff. It's Absolutely. just really, really cool that that level of detail is you know, brought into the show mm -hmm. um, for this character of Lilia, you know, yeah. so good. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad you didn't quote the uh, what was on the other table uh, in the task because that was our pub quiz question from last week's episode. So uh, thanks for that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Great, great catch, Joyful Baker. Yeah, thanks, Joyful Baker. Uh, on this episode, uh, an email from Coffee and Vodka who says, Greetings, fellow Force Ghost Defenders. <laughs> well, better than the conclusion of One Division. Mm. Not as good as Episode 7. Agatha being the source of Jennifer's binding was disappointing. A writer's shortcut in an otherwise okay ending. Agatha stopping short of killing Billy when draining him showed that all the deaths that went before were not part of some curse or automatic function beyond her control. In short, she is a murderous villain and not a victim of an uncontrollable power. Mm. So Billy's acceptance of her kind of makes him an accessory after the fact, mm. adding some nice depth to his character. I guess the road being his creation and the deaths resulting from it helped him inform his decision. In for a penny, in for a massacre. <laughs> it was nice to see Alice get a proper farewell in a scene that was very Sandman in nature. Mm -hmm. Also, does this mean that Billy and Tommy are eternal? What wasn't answered is why Agatha allows the belief that she had something to do with Nicky's death when it was her entreaties to death which extended his life. Finally, do you think this is all for Jen, or will we see more of her in an upcoming show? Off for another rewatch and the long wait for Mephisto's debut in Iron Heart. Four <laughs> lyrical long cons, murdered Mrs. What's her names <laughs> and blind bindings out of five. Peace and take care, coffee and vodka. Excellent stuff, coffee and vodka. Yeah, I think you're on par with um, sort of me here. And uh, I'm certainly waiting for Mephisto to to turn up. Um, I could I could see him rocking an Iron Man suit, actually. <laughs> Do you know I'm, I'm in Devil Red? Yeah, I think I, I know they made a mention of Mephisto in uh, in this season, but that was definitely just to uh, just to um, have a bit of fun with the fans who thought he was going to turn up in one division. But you know. Given that we have the return of the Catholic um, Daredevil coming in March, maybe Mephisto could appear in Daredevil he Born really Again. Could. You know, Mephisto Born Again. Uh. And actually, just <laughs> thinking about Mephisto, because yes, it was a little kind of breadcrumb there, yeah. um, a little sort of nice little playful gesture, mm -hmm. I think, from the showrunner and, and the writers. I was just wondering whether, you know, the black heart mm. uh, identified by uh, Lilia, also, uh -huh. you know, in the text message yep. from um, Billy's boyfriend, mm -hmm. and also the, I think someone said that Billy's earring was a stud in the shape of a heart yep. as well. Um, that was it? That's all it was? It was, wasn't yep. it? Just a little red herring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's 
again, one of the things I like about this now being a circular show where you go back to the start and you watch it all through again, knowing the things you know, um, it adds to it, I think. Uh, it'll, make it, it'll make it more interesting because a lot of the stuff that actually happened on the road, a lot of the stuff that you're speculating about is actually just things brought in from yeah. Billy's room, Billy's life. So um, so that's that's really cool. Um, interesting that Coffee and Vodka pointed out something about Agatha. I said earlier on in the season that I wondered if Agatha was unable to stop her taking the entire life force of a witch. I'm still not sure whether she was able to stop in the past or whether she just chose to ride it out because she made that choice at the graveside of uh, of Nikki that she was going to take all of the lives. Um, but here she makes the choice to not take Billy's life. But I think she was teetering on the edge, though. I think she, there is a moment where you see her genuinely go, oh, this feels great to have yeah, the power. Yeah, and she absolutely. does look like she's just going to take Billy's life and then chooses not to, yeah. chooses to let him live here. Um, so, no, she she doesn't seem like it's it's a curse or it's completely automatic that she's going to kill them. But I just wonder if she um, just hadn't tried in the past to stop herself, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Excellent stuff, Coffee and Vodka. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much for the feedback. Absolutely. Thanks, Coffee and Vodka. Uh, let's head on over to our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash TV podcast industries. First up, Brian Mersk says, other than some great character building, I'm not really too sure I really get what the point of the entire show was. Interesting, Brian. Uh, I guess not on the uh, on the joy train for uh, Agatha all along <laughs> this time. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I guess I guess once again, it's the journey and the the development of the characters that is what the show is about. I guess. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, I, definitely. Yeah, this is a big universe, and hopefully, we'll see them all again. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I I think I think this is the problem with connected universe, mm. though, is that in order to build the platform and certainly through TV shows where you're six, seven, eight hours, uh -huh. um, sometimes it might get lost if it's building towards a movie that has the payoff, you know, and I, I, I guess I can, I can understand that that is a risk here for Marvel. Yeah, but one of the things I have loved about the feedback about Agatha all along specifically is that you don't have to watch anything else. You can just watch Agatha well, all along yeah. on a loop over and over yeah. again. No, absolutely. <laughs> and, and sometimes the point of a show is just to tell a great story with some characters, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I like, I, I like as, a, as a big comic book fan, a big Marvel fan specifically, um, I'm more of a fan of the stories that go on for years um, at times. The one shots are very, very rare in Marvel where they just have one issue that comes out and tells you one story that's self-contained. That's not really something that Marvel has ever done. So um, they, they do maybe once every couple of years, they do a one shot issue, but it yeah. always builds into something else. And I guess kind it's of cheaper deal. to do a comic though than yeah. uh, a movie. Oh, very much so. Very much so. But, so, uh, but yeah. I mean, that's, that, as I say, it's more of the risk, I mm -hmm. think, that things don't pay off or take so long to pay off. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's different medium, so yeah. not necessarily the same. But it does yeah. depend on what, what the payoff you're looking for is. The payoff here for the character of Agatha is that she has now aligned herself with the good guy. She's she's stopped her Or has he aligned ways. herself with being a bad... I mean, this is the point. But she doesn't have the ability to take, to take the power of other witches now. She's become a ghost. She hardly has the power to touch anything anymore. So. In for a penny, in for a massacre. In for a massacre. Well, you know? that's, that's the way and it goes. And again, yeah. maybe not off the road he licked it um, given Wanda yeah, perhaps uh, and you just do you know what I mean I'm just saying it's like it's it's an interesting yeah. unresolved thing um, again with Jen will that get resolved mm -hmm. we'll see um, or is that the resolution her flying off into the sunset and, and she's that might be it with her powers now yes yeah. you know um, uh, uh, thanks for that Brian and thanks for sending in your feedback I'm sorry you didn't enjoy it as much as we did yeah uh, thanks Brian also Paul Tenshi Lee says episode 6 cemented the very real possibility that William Billy is the real driver behind the road and now we find out that Nicholas and Agatha created the song and she used it as a con for hundreds of years to gain power these two episodes are arguably the heart of why this season exists and were slightly less satisfying to me because they weren't as tightly crafted as episode 7 however 8 and 9 sets down various bits of lore gives Agatha a new job and opens up the route for Billy Wiccan to continue on the MCU. Yes, absolutely. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree uh, with your sentiment there, Paul, for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. And anything that keeps Catherine Han and uh, Joe Locke in a job, I'm, I'm all up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. Uh, thanks again, Paul. Uh, Courtney McLean says, 
I really wanted to love the finale. I enjoyed it, but it felt like a lot of build-up and was a bit hollow in the end. Too many loose ends and ambiguous one-liners. I get wanting to set up the next season. I just feel like there were elements to this season that should have had more conclusion. And these episodes fell flat after Lilia's episode. Mm. How exactly is Jen the way forward? Why did Agatha promise Rio bodies? Why did Rio want Agatha dead in the first place? Just love as scorn? I loved how the show kept me guessing, and it was beautiful. I wish it had made me feel more of anything at the end. Thanks so much, Courtney. Um, That's really interesting. And... I do have sympathy with what you're saying because certainly I think for episode six at the end with Billy with the crown and not really seeing all of it and then suddenly going off in a different direction. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel, you know, the thing that you do is you want a conclusion, um, you know, whether that's that they find Tommy at the end of the road or mm. that it's, you know the 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 going off together is because they're going into the MCU and it's a new story. Um, yeah, so I right. I kind of I have sympathy for what you mean around everything having to be left for another time because in this world of television now there may never be another time. Mm. Um, you know, and like and I kind of, I, I personally I get the resolution that Tommy has been brought back into the world though. Uh, you know, we now know that he's there, he's he's in a body, he's alive. And while Billy and himself didn't reunite at the end of the road, like Billy thought was going to happen, he's brought him back at the end of the road. He's brought him back into the yeah. world. So that in itself can be a resolution for the show for me. I do agree with you about some of the outstanding questions. You know, the, the idea of why did Agatha promise Rio the bodies and why did Rio want Agatha dead in the first place? I think just in general, the, the concept of death really, as as she says herself in the show, is she's the inevitable thing. She's the thing that happens to everybody. We all die. And Agatha's a character that's defied that now for centuries on end and had defied it at the point when um, that we see Death and herself meet when Nikki dies. So it's not necessarily that Rio specifically wants Agatha dead. Agatha should be dead by now because humans should be dead much earlier than 400 years. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what I think it is. Um, I don't think Rio's specifically chasing down Agatha. I don't think she wants to take her away, but she should be dead. So death is there to claim the people that should be dead. So she's saying to her, I'll give you another chance here. If you give me Billy, you can you can live for longer. But if not, it's your time to go now, basically. You know? Um so I don't think I don't think that's about the lover scorned part of it. In fact, I feel like Agatha is the lover scorned. That's why she hates Rio as much as she does. That's why she hates death as much as she does. She feels like she's the lover scorned, uh, more than anything else. But thanks so much for your thoughts, Courtney. Yeah, thanks, Courtney. Heather Wallace sent in her thoughts in the episode and said, I honestly don't know how to feel. I went from being moved that Agatha sacrificed herself for Billy to despising her for murdering witches for her own gain. I had a similar reaction to Wanda in Multiverse of Madness. Grief is not an excuse to become a monster. Mostly I just feel angry that Sharon, Alice and my queen Lilia died for absolutely no reason. I mean, Lilia even warned Agatha about hitting the deck and that sneaky witch didn't deserve it. The road was a con, the song was a con and I kind of feel con too. If the episode order was reversed and we saw Agatha's sacrifice after we knew her backstory, that may have made me more sympathetic to her, but I still feel that sacrifice was all part of a con for immortality. The only way to look at it is that Agatha was the anti-hero all along. Thanks so much, uh, Heather. Yeah, I mean, that could absolutely be mm. the the way of it, really. Yeah. Um, and I, I do feel um, not so much reversed, but I think that's my kind of feeling around it having... Agatha's sacrifice peppered through this series. Mm. Um, it's kind of like Nicholas Scratch, you know? Just tell Nicholas Scratch's story because actually I loved it. Yeah. I don't think it needs to be held back as another red herring, you know, because we've got the Black Heart red herring, yeah. the Mephisto red herring. Nicholas Scratch, is he, isn't he? You know, yeah. is, and like in the end, it's sometimes just tell the story. Um, and I think that just would have helped for the final episode, to be honest. Um, I still really enjoyed it. Um, and I, I kind of did like the fact that the, the song was a con. Mm-hmm. Um, as I say, it felt to me more in keeping with Billy 
projecting his reality and making up the road. And it was made up in song yeah. in 1750. So it felt like there were parallels. And that's why I feel have them running along together. Mm -hmm. And then you get, rather keeping Agatha's story a mystery, mm. you expose it and you have it and you embrace, you've got Lilia's mystery in there. You've got a whole rake of other mysteries. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's too many mysteries for one series to potentially cope with. I would say it's just about coped with it, but I think it could have been handled even better. Right. I'll, I'll uh, respectfully agree to disagree <laughs> on that. But thanks so much for your thoughts, Heather. Um, we'll move on to Adam Burton, who just simply simply says, bit underwhelming, to be honest. Like the second last episode, then the finale was just a bit flat for me. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, thanks so much, Adam. Um, yeah, I think uh, that can be the way sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, Donald Dennis says, I really liked it, but a lot of the final episode almost felt like it was meant to be released later as a surprise, like the Cats episode of Sandman. Mm. The creation of the song was interesting, but I'm surprised they didn't show Agatha using her stolen power to try and heal her son or bring him back. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, interesting, yeah. actually, yeah. Although, I mean, we just get that moment where she says, you know, I can do all these things. I can cast the spell. Yeah. I can, can control feeble minds. Mm -hmm. and But I can't divine when you're going to be taken from me. I and can't, she also says, I can't heal you. I yeah, can't exactly. help you, you know. Um, yeah. And I can't feed you effectively yeah. through magic. Exactly, exactly. Um, that's a really interesting idea, though. Um, but I, I do also have the side of my head where it's also the mcu so the idea that any character can bring people back from the dead after they're gone um that does open up a can of worms that you might not want to open in the mcu i think yeah <laughs> exactly uh, thanks donald thanks donald uh, adrian johnson says i surprisingly really like this series overall i enjoyed the story the new characters and on, although i wanted the ones we lost to all come back at the end i do appreciate that they didn't i look forward to the journey ahead marvel tv is back in good form Absolutely, yeah. uh, Asian. I don't say, you, Adrian. Even though I've kind of been a little bit off, um, I'm totally with you. I love this series. Yes. I still did a defend for both of them. Absolutely. You know? Um, I just... Uh, and I think it's overall, it's a really good season. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not hating. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's been great. I, I loved it as well, Adrian. Thanks yeah. so much for your thoughts. Great, Adrian. Thanks so much. Uh, Becky Anderson says, Episode 8 was okay. The showdown was cool. I loved all the visuals this show has had all season. I'm glad Agatha didn't let death take Billy after all. The best part was the end, watching Billy realize the truth of the road. All, all I could think of was the usual suspects. Mm -hmm. I literally said, Billy is Kaiser Soze <laughs> to my TV. Great reveal and ending with Agatha saying boo behind him was great. Episode 9 was brilliant. I loved getting the backstory of the song and the reveal the road was never real, just a con. Seeing her with Nikki was so sweet and made sense why she was so fond of teen. My favourite moment was when she admitted the reason she wouldn't cross over is because she was afraid to face her son. Mm -hmm. Billy making the entrance to the road, a memorial for the fallen witches, was so touching. Hope they find Tommy. I'm going to miss this show so much. What a ride. Absolutely, Becky. And it might be riding into Vision Quest. Who it might knows? Be. It might be sooner than we think. I mean, yeah. that is pure speculation on our part. Yeah. But um, the filming doesn't start until 2025. They're still writing scripts at the moment. Given the reaction to Agatha all along and how much fun people have had and how much joy it's brought people, I would be shocked if they don't incorporate something of Agatha all along into, mm, into exactly. Vision Quest. Yeah. 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 Great stuff. Thanks, uh, Becky. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Becky. And, and one other thing that I do love about this series that I didn't say earlier on, um, what I love about it is it didn't end with the big punch-up battle. Uh, the big punch-up battle happened in episode eight, and they went for the emotional punch instead with the final episode. That's something different. Um, you know, we saw the whole joke in She-Hulk that they always thought an MCU movie has to end with a big punch-up battle between the two uh, big bads against each other. Uh, they chose to go for the emotional punch, which I think makes more sense for the show that Agatha all along was delivering. 
Yeah. Yeah. A uh, twist and turny road indeed. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, finally, Dr. Bob Phillips says, Jack Schaefer certainly knows how to write a tale of complex grief, doesn't she? Sometimes boys just die. Despite everything anyone can do, episode seven might have been the best standalone episode, but I love the unveiling of the con turned reality in the final episode and really, really want this storyline to continue. Excellent stuff, uh, Dr. Bob. Yes, sir, Dr. Bob. Uh, Totally uh, want the story to continue as Mm -hmm. well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everybody, for your feedback on this season of Agatha All Along. Again, if you want to get in contact with us before our wrap up finale episode, uh, you can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV Podcast Industries. If you want to support us, you can also support us over on patreon.com slash TV Podcast Industries. Or you can support us by going over to buymeacoffee.com slash TVPI. And the best way, of course, to support us is sharing the podcast, because sharing the podcast is sharing, sharing the, the love. witchy love. It is. We will, of course, be back with the next Marvel TV show, which is What If? Season 3 coming out on the 22nd of December. And looking forward to covering a different type of Marvel show um, on the podcast here. But if you want to catch up with the other stuff, we're... we're covering uh, you can pop on over to tvpodcastindustries.com join us there we're covering the last couple of episodes of the awesome penguin another one of the best shows of the year mm. one of the ones i'm really enjoying covering every week definitely uh, just two episodes left for that one as well yeah i know uh flying uh through that even though penguins can't fly absolutely and there's no batman to fly in there I know. at all yeah <laughs> but thanks so much for joining us on the road so far and until we see you later on down the road See you later, witches. Yes, thanks so much, fellow defenders, for joining us. As always, it's a pleasure discussing all things uh, Marvel Mm -hmm. with you. Until next time, keep watching, keep listening, and of course, keep defending. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Bye. Down, down, down the road, down.